what was your aha journey or maybe it was an aha moment I, you know everybody's different um but what had you start to look behind closed doors and peel back the layers on what you were eating and how it was actually affecting how you feel imagine that right and then potentially affecting how your body is going to be as 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 we all age and whether disease is going to come in or not or what 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 happened yeah so for me it was more of a gradual transition mm -hmm. a gradual process There's a lot of you know just end of one experimentation trial and error mm -hmm. and just really looking for and this was you know, 10, 15 years ago before, you know, the plant-based movement is what it is today. Um, so really just trying a lot of that stuff um, personally, but it was really when I was living in Italy that I saw the difference between the population. You know, you didn't see obesity the way that it is here, especially if you spend any time in the Midwest no. or the South. Okay. It's pretty alarming, right? And there, you know, and the 90-year-old uh, grandmas are out there walking to the grocery store every day. They're getting their food. They're walking back home. They're cooking every day. Even, you know, when I would go to the store and get, like, produce or anything like that, I, I would notice it would perish in a pretty short amount of time, whereas, you know, when I was shopping here, you know, stuff would last for, like, three weeks or a month. So it's just Scratching like, your head on that wait, one. Yeah, something's not right here, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, um, and I just didn't need to be 240 plus pounds anymore so it was really about how do i you this know, was after you were transform. playing for you you were playing with the doves in bologna yeah i was or, playing yeah. but i was again playing both sides of the ball so um, i wasn't playing full back i was right. running back and i was safety and i was like all over the field okay. kind of like i was back in high school and there's no way i could have done that at the weight that i was and just mm -hmm. you know physically i wasn't totally happy with you know my body image at 240 plus pounds huh. and just like everything hurt right oh really and, yeah uh, uh, I mean, joints and everything, everything that moved was hurt that because yeah. of your diet which was inflammatory as you said or was it because it just was too much was it muscle or fat on you so it was definitely both it was more muscle more fat mm -hmm. um and i think you know obviously the diet only compounded that right the inflammatory uh when you say inflammatory it. i think maybe our audience would like to know what you mean by inflammatory like what foods are inflammatory so yeah. dairy to start, obviously. Um, I think you know one thing that we have to be careful of when we talk about diet and nutrition is not to speak too broadly, because um, I think mm. where we're going is it's becoming more specific, right? A lot of times you know, we just say, okay, meat's bad, or you know certain types of food are bad, but mm. you need to kind of look go one step further and it's really about okay how is that you know produced how's it grown how's it harvested right because you know let's say um, grain or something that's full of glyphosate and other stuff oh. isn't any healthier than you know some other types of food that might be better off right so there's a lot of things that can be uh, inflammatory and you know the main ones are going to be sugar dairy mm -hmm. refined oils and mm -hmm. so i really and the chemicals that they spray on them exactly I mean, those are yeah, just all the like pesticides lethal. and herbicides and yeah. everything else right so um you know it takes a lot of due diligence and and going that one step further a lot of times stuff if it's in a package you know it's already you know red flags should be up because how much do you really know about you know the farmer or whatever's on yeah. the you know downstream of that um and so that over time for me has been where i've continued to to learn and just look to okay what is in our food because today um most of what we eat would be unrecognizable you know mm -hmm. 30 years ago 50 mm -hmm. years ago right and our food has just drastically changed so much that we have to be kind of you know our own mm -hmm. um self-advocates for seeking out you know what uh, it makes us feel good and that's i guess the first place to start is that mm -hmm. intuitiveness to say okay when i eat this how do i feel right is it giving me more energy is it making me feel more mm -hmm. alive and well or do i have a temporary benefit that you know yeah it tastes good but you know then i want to go take a nap or my gut's a mess or you know something you look fantastic you've been Thank an you. athlete a lot of people will want to emulate you so mm. when you talk about the foods you you um that make you feel good and that you look for tell us what what are the criteria first off i mean I've it, really this year, it's trying to not eat stuff in a package that's not always feasible, right? And so mm -hmm. basically, yeah. when it is out of a package, I look for first thing I'll look for is the ingredients, right? And so I think just like a basic 
tutorial on how to read a nutrition label is something very simple but very um, empowering. So, you know, typically if it has like five or more ingredients, um, then I will avoid it. Um, depending on obviously what it is exactly. If it has a lot of stuff that I can't pronounce or won't recognize, then it's definitely off the list. Like a little test that I'll do with my nephew when I babysit him. He's like, he wants Doritos and Cheetos and all this stuff. It's like, right. cool, you can have them if you can pronounce the ingredients <laughs> on the back of the That's package. perfect for the little kiddo. <laughs> and he's like, he X, all Y, and Z. They're like, those aren't supposed to be together. And like... <laughs> Um, so that's really where I start, but it, I mean, 90% is really food in its natural form, right? So, you know, talking about green mm. veggies, all the, you know, boring, but you know, the stuff that really makes you but full of feel life. Good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I noticed when I raced a lot in Italy and the biggest difference I feel like from here, as far as, um, food consumption goes and, and, and grocery stores and, um, uh, convenience stores, whatever you know, they always say to stay to stay out of the aisles, yep. right? To stay perimeter. healthy, right? Stay yep. on the perimeter, um, and they have a very large perimeter that then spills into the aisles. I mean, there's fruits and vegetables in the aisles, um, and we have the opposite. It's like a small perimeter and this massive, like especially if you go to a Ralph's or Albertsons or Piggly Wiggly or Winn Dixie. I'm trying to think of some of the grocery stores that are all over the country, just ginormous section of every single thing you would hear crinkling before you opened it. Yeah. And that is what is considered food. And I guess really what you're saying is that's actually not food. Right. Yeah. The, the majority of it's not. And I think we've just gotten so far disconnected um, with where our food comes from. When I was living in Italy, yeah. it was like a permanent farmer's market, you know, and you still had yeah. like the, the specialist, the specialist grocer, you still had your, uh, your butcher, you know, for meats. And, and so it wasn't like, yes, you know, markets do exist. That wasn't where I was shopping. I was fortunate enough to be close enough to the center where that's where it was. And that's, yeah. you know, how we used to consume food. We used to know, you know, the person that was, was producing it. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. fortunately that's not always, you you know, accessible. It's not always the reality, you know, especially, you know, if you look around our country, there's a lot of food deserts, right, where you just don't have access to, mm -hmm. you know, clean, healthy food. Um, yeah. So it's it's a pretty big challenge, you know, when you're trying to do the right thing, trying to seek out um, clean, good food, and that's yeah. all you have, you know, uh, at your availability. And um, with 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet, yeah. it's a little harder to know your farmer than when there was half a billion or something. Exactly. I mean, that makes more sense that we right. would have been able to look down the street and say, you know, hey, Joe, yeah. it, it just, it's not that way anymore. I mean, right. most of our food doesn't even come from within our own country. Exactly. Yeah, and it's like if you look at an apple, for instance, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we have, like, beautiful orchards up in Sebastopol, you know, not too far away, um, but majority of apples will travel like halfway around the world yeah. before they you know ever you know before you eat it right if it's sitting on in a grocery store and then you start to think at where something you know as fragile as like a blueberry or whatever how did this blueberry make this trip all the way here and like this not pristine, get crushed like, or something <laughs> like, yeah so right and look at start to make you you know think and so you know obviously if you have access to a farmer's market or something like that that you know you can you know, eat more locally, that's a great step in the right direction because generally, you know, the food that you're going to get there is, you know, closer to home. It's going to be, um, you know, you can talk to the, the mm -hmm. producers of it, find out about, you know, their farming practices or whatever it might be. Um, just make a more informed uh, decision about what you're putting in your body. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.